Good morning and welcome to our November uh, 2022 edition of Cyber Mentoring for the Region 1 ESC Paths Project. We are very excited to have you join us today. Uh, a reminder that we are recording this. Uh, I am going to give opportunities to give questions in the chat and to um, unmute yourselves and ask questions. But we want to welcome our guest for this month. I'm very excited about this. I've been looking forward to having him here for a very long time. Uh, I want to welcome Andres Baron. Uh, Andres was uh, one of our original PATHS interns uh, from the very beginning of the grant. Welcome, Andres. Hello. Thank you for having uh, me. And Andres, let me uh, let you uh, introduce yourselves and tell a little bit about yourself. Uh, well, morning. My name is Andres Barron. I, as Claudia said, I used to work uh, as a past intern, and now I am currently working as a nurse at Rio Grande Regional Hospital at, in McAllen. And I've been working there for, uh, for the past, actually, this is my seventh, seventh month now, working there at the hospital. That's very exciting. Um, and today I, I uh, have been so looking forward to interviewing you because I think your story is a very typical and possible story for any student out there who is looking forward to getting into the healthcare field. I don't think there's anything very unusual about what you did. It's just the fact that you did it. So let's go back to the very beginning, even before I met you. Um, tell us a little bit about uh, high school and what, where did you go to high school? What did you do in high school? Just let us know a little bit about that. Sure, absolutely. So for high school, I went to, um, well, it was called, it was a nickname Med High, but I think the actual name is South Texas High School for Health Professions, or it's, I think it's been changed, something like it that. It has now. been, they're focusing on that now, right. Yes. So I went there uh, from my freshman to my senior year. And typically, you know, in high school, you're still kind of trying to figure out what you want to do. And that was me. I was trying to figure out for a while what I wanted to do. Uh, I think when I first started, I was thinking about maybe becoming a pharmacist or a pharmacy tech. Mm -hmm. And then I thought about radiology, a, radio a radiology tech. And uh, I was just dabbling here and there. I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do until I uh, until my senior year. That's where I kind of decided, decided, you know, I kind of like being, I kind of like the idea of being a nurse because uh, I always wanted to help people out. And I just I never tried, I never could figure out what exactly what I wanted to do. Uh, until uh, when I started doing clinical rotations at uh, DHR, mm -hmm. part of a um, what was it, a medical assistant program that they had. Okay, and I really I really liked what I saw at, at what the nurse is doing. So I, I that's when I decided I wanted to become a nurse. Um, so tell us a little bit about the classes that you took in high school. Um, I know you were at Med High. We'll call it Med High because that's what we're used to calling it. Yeah. Um, and so I know that the classes were probably different than traditional high schools, but I do know that most of our districts have health science pathways. So what were the type of classes that you took? Absolutely, I can, I can uh, from what I remember, I know from uh, every grade level, there is different classes. Uh, the first one focused on medical terminology and the basics for, uh, for health professions, uh, basically what HIPAA was, and uh, like I said, medical terminology, from what I can recall. Mm -hmm. uh, sophomore year, we focused on anatomy and physiology, where we went uh, through, uh, of course, the, the, the body systems and uh, some cool stuff. I remember one of the, one of the lab uh, experiments, uh, experiments that we did in my sophomore year is that we actually checked our blood type, which was pretty cool. I remember mm -hmm. that. Yeah. And uh, our junior year, that's basically where we kind of started deciding what exactly we wanted to do. Uh, if we want to focus on maybe becoming an EMT uh, or a medical assistant or maybe uh, radiology or different things, even a CNA, they had a CNA program there. And in senior year is where uh, we decide to go into what program we want to do, which I chose as a medical assistant, because uh, that's where, like I said, I want to perhaps become a nurse and I want to see how it's like there on the floor. And uh, I'm really glad I, I chose it because it helped me 
it, it helped uh, reinforce my decision to become a nurse. Do you feel like um, the classes you took specialized and gave you a good overview or, or how do you feel about the classes that you took? Do you feel you got a well-rounded view of everything? Absolutely. It, it really helped, especially because um, at the hospital, you do you do use a lot of uh, medical terminology and jargon to uh, there that just it helps that you have the background. Right. Of what they're saying. Good, good. I'm glad to hear that. So what about extracurricular things to do in high school? Did you participate in anything beyond just your academics? And if you did, what did you participate in? Uh, well, I did join HOSA in my freshman and sophomore year. And tell us what that is. Uh, okay, let me try to remember correctly. It's been a while. <laughs> uh, uh, HOSA is, um, it's, uh, it's, um, it's a program. It's, a, it's, it's an organization that allows you to participate in different um, healthcare. Oh, goodness, I'm trying to remember now. I think it's, I don't know what it, HOSA stands for, but I think almost I think most of our districts have HOSA. Yes, if I if I recall correctly, I know we we mostly focus on healthcare professions and what what it does and public health, and the students are assigned a specific a specific a topic and they present on that. That's what I remember. I only did it for uh, one or two years, and it was it's been a little while, so I can't exactly remember. Uh -huh. And uh, I also um, I also volunteered at the hospital with the volunteer program at DHR, mm -hmm. where uh, you uh, were, it's for the summer and basically you volunteer to help out at different departments and uh, it helped me. Yes, Roxana, yes, health <laughs> occupations. Yeah, thank Health you. occupation students of America. Thank you so much, I appreciate that. <laughs> thank you, it's been a while, <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> and um, and uh, like I said, I, I volunteer at the DHR with the volunteer program. It, it kind of also helped me experience some of the programs I want to try out. I did volunteer at the pharmacy in the, my freshman year where I was trying to figure out if I wanted to become a pharmacist. Mm -hmm. And it was a good experience. I liked it. And that kind of helped me uh, guide my decision because um, in the pharmacy, you do help prepare the medications and stuff like that. But I kind of felt like it was a little uh, hands-off and I wanted more hands-on experience. Yes. So I decided for my next year, I volunteered at the radiology department, which I liked. It was pretty cool to see. But um like I said, it it was um, it was not something that was seemed uh, particularly interesting to me after a while. So, I just continued with uh, uh volunteering at the different departments, and I think it was my junior year, mm -hmm. the summer of my senior year, where I was going to become a senior, is where I volunteered at the at the medical surgical floor, mm -hmm. and I saw how what the what the nurses were doing. I actually really liked it, so that's where I decided, may hey, maybe I should be a nurse. Right. And so you graduated. And once you graduated, I know that you went on to your post-secondary um, uh, program. So tell us, uh, where did you go? What program did you go into? Of course. So um, once I graduated, I went to STC because my sister, uh, Danielle, um, she, uh, she was at the time in the nursing program there for the LVN program. Mm -hmm. And she told me that uh, it's really good and that she thinks it'll be a great opportunity. Plus, um, as a single parent household, uh, money is a little bit hard to come by to pay for tuition. Yes. And uh, I thought, uh, based on other past experiences and what other people have said, my aunt, who's a nurse as well, she uh, she went to that program as well, and she highly recommended it. So I decided, hey, you know what? Let me Let me join. Let me try joining the LVN program. And I also did apply for the ADM program in hopes to see uh, which one I'll get into. Right. So uh, I focused on the prerequisites, which was the anatomy and physiology one and two, and some extracurricular activities like uh, psychology, not psychology, not not extracurricular, I'm sorry, the some, um, oh goodness, what's the word? Basically, it helps, uh, it gives you a good resume to help you uh, okay. apply for the program. So I took psychology as well. And some humanity electives because um, I if I'm not sure everyone knows, but for the LVN program and the ADN program, it's based on a point system. So the more points you have for certain uh, grades they took and classes, mm -hmm. uh, the more points you have and a better chance of you getting into the program. Right. So that's what I was doing to uh, build up those points to apply. I didn't get into the ADN program, unfortunately, but I did get into the LVN program. 
which uh, really helped. It helped me get that uh, start there. And I have to say, I was using your old resume when I put it on the flyer and I put that you went into the ADN, but you actually went into the LVN program. Yes. Okay. Yes. So tell us about the the LVN program and, and what you experienced when you were there. Oh my goodness. I was super nervous. <laughs> it was, I was super nervous because, um, I had, uh, I had found out I got into the LVN program right after, um, I believe it was during, uh, there's a hurricane at one point here and it kind of flooded the area. You're right. I, yeah. It was I, right at the beginning of the pandemic. Yes. Right at the beginning of the pandemic. It was a, that was a crazy year. <laughs> Um, so I found out that's because I was at my grand my grandmother's house because our house uh, it flooded the street was flooded and it got into mm -hmm. our house we had to uh, vacate the area for a little while and I had found out and I I was I was I was happy about it it was just like oh my goodness how's this gonna work because <laughs> it was right at the beginning of the pandemic right I had no idea how it's gonna work but um my my first semester I was nervous but everyone was nervous right. because you know we it was uh we're we're starting out. And uh, I was really thankful to my professors because, you know, it was a difficult situation, but they they were understanding and they did their best to give us the knowledge and skills that we needed. Yes. So um, we, we were learning. Uh, and then I remember in the beginning, uh, we were trying to figure out for clinical rotations where we were, we were going to go because it was the height of the pandemic and not right. a lot of hospitals or clinics were allowing pay, uh, students to come in. But thankfully, um, our first rotation was at Mission Regional Hospital, and that was a that was a good experience. I really liked it. So, what types of classes did you take um, while you were in the program? Because first of all, how many semesters is an LVN program? For the LVN program, it's three semesters. Okay, and what type of classes were you taking once you were in the program? So, the first semester, it's basically. Uh, you know, the learning the basics of nursing, some nursing skills, like uh, starting an IV or um, starting an IV um, and uh, learning how to uh, uh, to uh, do your assessment on patients and basically uh, how to do a proper assessment. Like I said, you know, where, where you where you exactly you listen to the heart and the lungs. Right. And uh, what you are supposed to hear and what you aren't supposed to hear. OK. And. Uh, other than nursing skills, it's basically learning the about the diseases of the body, which is called the, oh my goodness, what is it called? Uh, I can't remember the class's name, but I know we called it Nephi because uh, it, was a, it was a super long name, yeah. but it was abbreviated. So basically <laughs> you learn the, the different diseases of the body starting with a, starting with an organ system. Uh-huh. And, um, and like uh, basically about HIPAA and all that stuff in the first semester. And of course, the clinical rotations, the first, the first, the rotation. first semester of that. Well, I want to uh, take a minute and welcome everyone who's joined us. Uh, while you've been talking, we've had a, quite a few people join us. So welcome. Um, the chat is open that if you do have questions um, for Andres, that um, you can put them in the chat and he can answer those. Um, if you missed the beginning, Andres actually used to be one of the PADS interns but he is now working at Rio Grande Regional Hospital. And I wanna to talk to him today uh, for our time together about his, his path actually from high school through uh, what he's doing now. So while you were at STC, you were getting ready for your LVN program. That is where we met because you came to region one. So can you tell us a little bit about your process of becoming an intern. I remember it, but I want to hear your story. Of course. Uh, I'll get to your question right now, Alexandria. Yeah. Uh, so, um, so what happened was that at the time I had saved, I had been saving money from some odd jobs I had done over high school to uh, pay for my tuition because um, it was money was a little tight since uh, it was a single parent family. And um, my mom told me she actually works at Region One. She told me about the job that I was there because she thought it'd be a good idea, you know, to work so I can pay for my tuition. And it was right, it was right in, in the field for healthcare because um, it, the past basically focused on promoting healthcare professions for students. And I was focusing on becoming a nurse. So she thought that would be a good idea 
I thought, you know, that does sound like a good idea. That way I can, uh, you know, encourage students to go to healthcare to uh, try it out, to see if they really like to. And uh, I was super nervous because actually uh, being a past intern was my first official job because mm -hmm. I had worked odd jobs here and there. So um, I was super nervous and I was really happy to get a job to work with you, Claudia, and Dr. Alvarado and my, fe my fellow interns. Yes. Yes, it was very exciting. And I will tell you my side of it is that um, we got this grant. We were very excited about it. It was something that Dr. Alvarado and I feel very passionate about. As a matter of fact, I was doing other work and Dr. Atkins at the time approached me and said, we would like to take you off of what you're currently doing and have you join Dr. Alvarado. I was very excited about it. And then when we found out we were going to have interns, I've never, I mean, I've always been a teacher. I've never worked in a situation where we had interns and we interviewed a lot of people. But uh, if for those of you who are listening, uh, you can go to YouTube to the Paths Central uh, channel that we have on YouTube and you can see the recorded uh, cyber mentoring sessions that I had with Raquel and with uh, Robin, who were Andres's partners in this. Um, and they're great. I think they all were wonderful, but sure. I will tell you something about Andres is he was 18 years old, right out of high school. I had never worked with somebody so young before. So it, and then as you mentioned, um, I think you guys were only working a few months when the pandemic hit. So yes. we had to like, it It was new for you, but it was new for us also. So having you on our team was extremely beneficial because we were able to uh, look outside of the box. That's the best way I can say it. And um, which is what everybody had to do during the pandemic. We had to kind of figure out, you know, how we were going to change what we did. And it was very useful for Dr. Alvarado and I to have the three of you to help us, you know, think of new ways of doing what we're doing. So uh, Alexandria had a really great question. She said, what did you do as a past intern? So why don't you tell us a little bit about, you know, your experience as an intern and as we were adjusting to the pandemic, what were some of the things that we asked you to do? Absolutely. So I remember right in the beginning, Dr. Alvarado had this great idea of creating the website, which is now Path Central, uh, right. dot, I believe, or dot com. It's com now. <laughs> yes. It's com. So she had this great idea of starting a website that has all the healthcare uh, programs here located in the valley at STC, UTRGV, and uh, South Texas. This was it, Southmost Texas High uh, College. Yes. Basically, of all the all the higher education uh, in institutions here. Right. And the the little problem we had was that there's so much information. Uh, you, there's so much information regarding these programs. And Dr. Alvarado wanted us to see if we can um, kind of simplify, make it a one-stop shop where all the students can just find the program, click the link, and you can find a summarized version of it so they can know what they need to do in order to get into the program. So I remember Robin, Rachel, and I, we spent uh, quite a few weeks trying to think, how can we exactly uh, sort uh, uh, simplify it? So mm -hmm. there won't be so much information because I, uh, when I was 18, uh, I remember seeing all that stuff and trying to apply. It was overwhelming because there's so much to go yeah. through and you're trying to figure everything out. So uh, uh, thankfully, uh, thanks to a lot of help with, from you, Claudia, from Dr. Arado, um and everyone else, we were able to uh, simplify it and able to make it into a uh, framework. Basically, the question, the main, what was the main, the main question? There's four main questions, and uh, the first one was, uh, what do I need to focus on in high school? And we just focused on in grade levels, ninth grade, you know, trying to figure out what you want to do, focus on your classes, get good grades, and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. Second question was, um, what, uh, what about this program? What do I need to know about this program? Let's say the nursing program. So ninth right. grade, we'll talk about focusing on your healthcare courses. Uh, tenth grade. Uh, tenth grade, we'd focused on maybe uh, what kind of programs there are. Eleventh grade, we'll go uh, a little more in depth about the program, basically what uh, what kind of prerequisites you need. And twelfth grade would be uh, 
the what kind of exams you need to take in order for you to uh, uh, pass the pass the right. program. Yes. And then there was the website. So I I have no experience in website building. <laughs> so uh, I don't think Robin and Rachel did either. So we're trying yeah, to figure out. They hadn't. <laughs> We're trying to figure out uh, how the heck do we create a website, but I know we had a lot of help from uh, Jaime, who, yes. uh, who we worked with. Yes. Uh, we were able to uh, first create the website on Wix, which was pretty simple, okay. uh, but we ran across a couple problems there. And I know we switched to another program, which is now passcentral.com. So everyone was just a great help here creating, creating the website. And I was able to actually uh, to w learn how the website builds. So I kind of remember uh, some stuff here and there. <laughs> But um, yes, it was uh, it was pretty fun. I really enjoyed uh, working with everyone there. And I'm sure it was very different from what you were doing at school. I mean, I'm hoping that it was a little break. You know, if you're doing too much of one thing, it's nice to have that break. And I can tell you from my point of view, um, being a STEM specialist, I can build a website that's not an issue, but it's time consuming. And if I spent all my time doing that, I wouldn't have time to actually administer the 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 grant the way that it needed to be administered. So it was a huge help to us. Um, Enrique is asking a very good question. We'll go back to your schooling. We're going to go back and forth, I think, between your work and your school. So are there any qualifications to get into the LVN program? And if so, what so what would they be? So uh, yes, if uh, if you mean qualific qualifications, if you mean uh, prerequisites of what you need to do in order to get into the LVN program, yes, there is. Um, I know uh, I did focus on a little bit earlier. Some of the prerequisites were to take the anatomy and physiology one and two at STC, uh, to also take uh, another uh, course, I think it was college success for healthcare. Mm -hmm. Basically kind of uh, provide a guide on how to study and uh, how to focus on you know having a work uh, ha having a balance between studying and getting a rest and going to school. Right. And uh, a few others were to of course pass the HESI A2 exam. I know. Um, I, I believe it's still that you need to get a score of seventy five percent on the reading, uh, reading, uh, reading, anatomy, physiology, and math. And the math was. I think the math was the most difficult part for me because um, I, from Ed High, thankfully, it helped me with the anatomy and physiology. So I didn't have to focus too much on that. Just a, just a, a good review. But the math uh, was the difficult part for me because mm -hmm. it was a little hard. I always struggle with those decimals. Those are, <laughs> yeah. It's not the algebra or any higher level. It's the math math that, that's tough. Yeah. I, I, I still struggle multiplying decimals. It's just, it's so annoying. <laughs> um. Uh, Jackie Savayos wants to know, what advice would you give a high school student looking to get into the LVN program? That's a good question. Um, advice I would give is uh, if you've had prior experience at the hospital, maybe like I, uh, like I mentioned earlier, I did volunteer at the hospital, get a little experience there. It will kind of help you uh, see if this is something that you uh, really want to do. Because there's no shame. Of course, some people change their mind after becoming mm -hmm. a nurse. Even I, uh, during the little program, I thought about, is this something I really want to do? Because it was, um, I had uh, gone into the program. I didn't, I didn't expect it to be, uh, I expected it to be hard. I didn't expect it to be this hard, but especially right. with the pandemic. So I would try to see if you can um, try to volunteer, if you're able to, to at the help at the hospital to see if, um, kind of see if this is what you want to do. Uh, maybe uh, if you have a friend, or a family member who's a nurse to see, uh, give you a little bit of advice. As uh, as a nurse now, I can definitely recommend just try to see if this is uh, something you really want to do because there are certainly are many challenges, uh, especially as a nurse working during the pandemic. And I guess we can get uh, uh, into that a little bit later. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I want to talk about balancing being an intern and going through this difficult, um, rigorous course of study. What did you do to balance those two? Because I, I can tell you, you were with me for three years and I really never saw you very stressed. You seem, you know, on the surface, I'm sure you were. I mean, there's no getting through life just every day without being stressed. But what did you do to help maintain that balance? So the stress was the inside. It was all, <laughs> it was all on the inside. Um, 
But uh, I, I think my family, you know, I had a good support system at work and at home. You know, my my mom was very encouraging and she just encouraged me, you know, to stay balanced. And exercise is also helped out. I had a, right. uh, I have a, we and in the beginning of the pandemic, we also had gotten a dog because um, we thought it would help with uh, just because, just to cheer us up a bit. And he's still here right now. He's uh, he's asleep right now, <laughs> but um, it really helped with the stress and taking him on walks and uh, you know, making sure you have some downtime as well, because um, it's good, you know, to, uh, to focus on work and to study. You want to, you want to be, uh, you want to know, and you want to be good at what, at school, but you also right. want to make sure you get enough rest to, uh, to, uh, to you know, just relax. So you won't be so overwhelmed and stressed out. Right. How did you balance the time? Because you went to school full time, you I don't, you know, t- I don't know. You can talk about the hours that you worked and how did you manage school and work as far as scheduling is concerned? That was hard, <laughs> but I thank God that uh, I was able to do it pretty, uh, pretty well. Yeah. Um, so I know Dr. Arado was very, very, very helpful with um, help, uh, allowing me to go to go to school and work at the same time. She said, as long as you uh, just focus on school, that's what's more important right now. Just yeah. do your best with the hours. So um, for school, sometimes it's uh, sometimes you're there most of the day. So I would work, uh, you know, a couple hours here and there after I got out of school. And then I would use my day off from school. I believe we had Wednesdays off. That's where I would go to the office and help out there. So I was there for the whole day. Right. So I would do half days on the days I would go to school. And the day I was off, I would go to the office and work a full day. Yeah, I, I'm glad you brought that up because that's one thing I wanted to point out to everyone who's listening is that um, we were very willing to work with all of the interns according to their schedule. So if that, let's say during finals that they have to put in extra time studying, your final schedule doesn't always follow your regular class schedule. Um, I know that all three interns that we had at the time would come to us and just tell us what your schedule was. And if we needed to adjust, we needed to adjust. So that's great. Yes. Um, Noah Rojas wants to know what kind of challenges did you face during the LVN program, especially during the pandemic? There is a lot of challenges. (laughs) Um, Like I mentioned earlier, uh, in the beginning, everyone was really stressed out and nervous because we were wondering, how are we going to get the skills we need? Uh, mm-hmm. Because at the time we couldn't even go to the campus. Right. We were just doing it uh, over the Blackboard Zoom. Right. And we're thinking, how are we going to gain the skills we need to become a nurse? How are we going to get the clinical rotations done? Because at the time, the hospital didn't allow any students to go in because of the high epidemic. We we're saying they're saying no, it's too much of a high risk. There's we have COVID patients. Um, that was the first semester. My second semester, um, I had gotten used to it, but uh, uh, I actually. This was a little difficult for me, but I remember actually I had failed one of the classes. Mm-hmm. It was the that darn knee high course. <laughs> um, it was uh, the knee high course, basically, like I mentioned earlier, focuses on the different diseases of the body. Mm-hmm. And I'm not a very good test taker. <laughs> so um, I had actually failed the class because uh, it was, like I said, I'm not that good test taker. So I had found out that I will need to repeat the semester. Mm-hmm. So that was... Yes, yeah, Roxanne, it does have amazing simulation hospital. Actually, I went to the West Glow one. I didn't go to the McAllen one, mm-hmm. but I know the McAllen one is like, like really, really good. It is. <laughs> but the West Glow one's good too. But I know the McAllen one is the one that like everyone really wants to go to. I wanted to go to that one, so, but they put me, they uh, assigned me to West Glow, but it was mm-hmm. good too. But yes, um, the second semester I actually had failed the class. So I had to repeat the semester. So that was, that was disappointing. Right. It's a little hard having to repeat while uh, while my other classmates who I gotten used to and really enjoyed being with them, they had moved on while I had to stay behind. Mm-hmm. So um, listen, failure is not the end. It may feel like no. it, but it's not the end. You just got to you got to get up and try again. And uh, it did help that now I knew exactly what to do, uh, what I knew already. And basically it was a, it was kind of the same thing, just a little different. I know, remember that um, one of the tests I actually did not do well on was for the cardiac disease. Everyone knew the cardiac diseases were the hardest ones. It is. It was super difficult. 
So the first time around, I didn't do too well. Second time around, I actually passed really well mm -hmm. because I already had that uh, knowledge now. And I wasn't, I didn't feel as pressure to, you know, I had to know everything. And I, right. I the second time I actually felt like I knew it. So it was a lot better. And, and uh, probably the, repeating oh, that. Yes. Helped you in actually in the job, because instead of kind of knowing it, you really know it. Yes. And I will share with you, you know, I have a very special uh, relationship with one of the um, instructors. My son is actually an instructor at STC, but when he was a student, he went through the same thing. He didn't pass one of his classes. He had to repeat. It was, it is very discouraging when that happens, but in the long run, I think it makes you a better employee in the healthcare system. So I'm glad, I'm glad that you shared that with us. So you had to make adjustments um, at school, and I know that you had to make adjustments uh, at, on our job. So if you could share what we did at Region 1 during the pandemic to adjust for the pandemic. Of course. So I remember um, we were kind of, when the COVID-19 news started coming out in early 2020, where we weren't sure of anything at the, at the beginning. You know, we weren't sure if it's going to be a big thing. And then in March, where it all started, <laughs> uh, I know Dr. Arado, everyone, she got it, everyone, we're trying to figure out what we're going to do. So we decided that we're going to continue to work on the website, but from home. And right. we would uh, have these uh, weekly uh, Zoom conference meetings, basically just to give an update on what we're doing, what we need to focus on. And I know that um, for a little while, uh, Robin, Rachel, and I actually did record videos regarding the healthcare professions. I think it's still there on the Past Central, uh, Central uh, YouTube YouTube channel. And uh, we just basically recorded about um, different professions like respiratory therapy, nursing, uh, emergency, uh, uh, EMTs, uh, nutritionists, and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, but like I said, uh, we just focused on Zoom conferences, just to give an update on what we're doing and focusing on the website. And uh, if we had any questions, you know, we can contact Dr. Alvarado at any time. Right. So uh, working from home actually did help a little bit uh, more of my schedule to uh, just to do work when I can and go to school at the same time. Good. So you're working, you're going to school. Um, pandemic kind of waned and we started being able to be face to face. Um, I know you, some of the things you did once the pandemic was, it wasn't over, but it slowed down. Um, you had some things that you were doing at school. I'm sure it was part of some of your last semesters. So why don't you, weren't you giving um, vaccinations? Yes, actually. Can I you tell us about that? Yes, that was actually my third semester where we, um, where we focused on helping uh, giving vaccinations. So it actually helped uh, you know, uh, with with that skill, uh, given uh, intramuscular injections, it was on a Saturday. I remember, and it was at um, it was at where was it at? It was in the it was in Star County. I, I think it was at Rio Grande. Yes. Yeah, at Rio Grande City. I remember that drive still. I was it was <laughs> it was very dark. Yes. <laughs> uh, but um, I remember going to that, and I had to, I told Doctor Alvarado about it, and she's like, "That's okay," because I think I was actually planning to work that Saturday because I need to make up some hours that I, right. I couldn't make up. But she said, that's quite all right. Just um, do as you can. And I, I really enjoyed that experience uh, doing that because it was um, it was really interesting to, uh, you know, learn how to give uh, vaccines, uh, basically like the little um, a little process you had to go through. We had to ask the people who were getting the vaccine um, a lot of questions if they ever had a large reaction to a, vac to a different vaccines. Uh, did they have... Um, what else did they ask? If they had any uh, disorders like, uh, like, uh, like uh, oh my goodness, I'm trying to remember. I, I know what I got asked. I got asked for allergies. Yeah. Um, if they had any allergic reaction and they were very specific about, and I'm sure it was the components of the vaccine. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. I yeah. got asked all of that. Yeah. It was a lot of questions. I can't remember all of them, but I know we had to go through a whole process. Mm -hmm. And then the the, the anxiety inducing part was giving the injection because it for the for uh, for vaccines that go to the muscle they hurt yeah they hurt they hurt <laughs> yeah and I know with, with some nurses they're able to do it and without it hurting too much oh uh, the cool thing was actually I remember my sister Danielle actually is the one who gave me my vaccine because I went to her vaccine clinic and she did it really really well so I'm hoping that the patients I gave the vaccine to it didn't hurt too much and yeah. 
If it did, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you were learning. <laughs> yeah. So you're finishing up school and and um, you're ready. You graduate and you're ready to move on. So tell us a little bit about um, applying and and well, I know that you took a little bit of time. So tell us about like that little transition period between school and work and um, cause I know you did some really smart things during that. It's funny cause I know what you did, but I don't want to say what you did. I want you to say it. So, um, tell us the little, um, transition period that you took between finishing school and getting a job. So I know that, um, after I had graduated from school, the, the big, the biggest thing in the way right now was uh, at that moment was passing the NCLEX. Right. Oof, that was a scary that was a scary uh, thing. I remember, um, I remember scheduling it, and that that test was not was not cheap. It was expensive. Yes. So I remember, uh, you know, signing up for it and thinking, okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna give me give me a little bit of time just so I can review the information and you know go over some uh, NCLEX material, and uh, I had scheduled it, um, this past March actually. Oh my goodness, right. it was this March. It seems like it was a long time ago, doesn't yeah. it? But it wasn't. Yeah. It was not very long ago. Yes, I scheduled it this past March. Yeah, that's right. Actually, just I actually graduated from the LPN program this past December. Oh my yeah. goodness. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, thank you, Roxanne. I'm glad to hear uh, able you're able to join. Thank you. Uh, and uh, I gave myself a little bit of time, you know, just to first. I did. I relaxed a little bit after the school after right. graduating because it was. It was a really hard journey, but I'm, I was glad I was able to pass. And uh, I had started studying and I was working at the same time, you know, it was a little easier to work mm -hmm. a little bit more and to study. And um, and the D-Day finally came where it was uh, <laughs> taking the NCLEX. So I got up early, I bought myself some breakfast and I was eating in the parking lot at the testing center. I was super nervous. I'm sure. Well, it was it was a really, really nerve wracking thing. And uh, I had gone over so many things in my head where, um, where in the NCLEX, I read some with some other students that had been telling me and some of my classmates who at, or had taken it was that um, if the cutoff questions at 75 means there's a good chance you passed. Right. So I was thinking, okay, if I, if I get 75 questions and it cuts off, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Yes. And I was think, thinking, wait. What if it what if it cuts off because I did so badly? It's like don't don't give this guy don't let this guy <laughs> give it up. <laughs> but um, I remember uh, taking it and you know I just did my best to stay calm and you know focus on what I knew. Yes. And it, it did actually cut off at seventy five questions. I was like, oh my goodness. So <laughs> I remember leaving and just like being brain dead for the rest of the day. <laughs> I wanted to do anything else. So um, I had so it was a little while before I found out that actually I passed. Mm -hmm. I was super happy about it. How long and, does it take after you took the exam? Was it days or weeks or how long? So I know um, for the unofficial results, it's two days, but you, you have to pay for it, which that's what I did. Yes. Um, but for the official results, I believe it was two to three weeks where you found out you passed. Yes. But yeah, I you know which one I opted for. I opted for yes. the unofficial results. So uh, I had passed and I was super happy about it. And now was uh, job applications. Yes. So that was um, that was something d different for me because, you know, I, I had worked at the, past, at the past projects, which I really enjoyed. But interviewing the hospital was really uh, nerve wracking. I was thinking like, maybe a hospital, maybe a clinic. I don't know. And I was trying to figure out where where I wanted to work exactly. Right. Um, I know, um, for LVNs, there's actually, um, excuse me. There's a lot of job openings right now. Yes. At the emergency room, at med surge, at different areas. Just thinking like, do I want to be in an emergency room? Do I want to work in med surge? Do I want to work, work somewhere else? Do I want to work at a clinic? Uh, so I remember scheduling my first job interview, which is the job I have now. Mm -hmm. And I, it was at the med surge floor uh, and at Rio Grande Regional Hospital. And I had interviewed with um, the director of the medical surgical floor. And she was very kind. Uh, I actually interviewed with two people because she actually didn't feel so well after a little mm -hmm. while. So she she sent the she sent me to another interviewee, which is a clinical manager. Right. Uh, and she was really nice too. And so I told them about my experience and how um, I'm 
basically I'm a newbie. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I'm I'm really I'll be really happy to get the job. You know, I'm uh, I'll do my best to learn. I'm I'm a quick learner and everything. Mm -hmm. uh, but maybe I should get into the process of how I uh, how I uh, got ready for the interview. I, right. I forgot about that. Uh, my my uh, my sister at the time who was working at DH who was working at DHR as a nurse in PACU. Right. And my aunt they were giving me some tips basically um on some stuff to ask like uh what responsibilities are you going to have on the floor? What's the nurse to patient ratio? How many, how many patients are you going to take as a nurse? Yes. Um, how long is the shift? Um, and basically what challenges can I expect? Mm -hmm. And so on and so forth. And those questions actually helped me see what, what exactly what I was getting into. And maybe what was right for you. Yes, exactly. So um, after the interview, I got home and I was thinking, okay, I was, they said they'll call me if they if they if uh, if I got the job. They called me three hours later, <laughs> and they said we would like to offer you the job. And I'm like, uh, okay. <laughs> so they said, great. Um, so you'll be starting in May, and this was in April. Right. I was thinking like, oh, oh my goodness, that's next month. So that's where I had to um re resign from working at that pass, and I actually um, resigned. I think two weeks before I was going to start because right. I wanted to at least, um, you know, get myself mentally and physically prepared for working at the hospital because it's different from rotations. You, you know, you're, you're helping out the nurse, but then, in, and working at the hospital, you are the nurse now. Yes. <laughs> so I wanted to um, mentally prepare myself for this job and uh, I was able to relax a bit. Uh, and I'm, I'm thankful to, to region one past, past, uh, past project for, you know, helping me get the jump start I needed to uh, start working as a nurse. Well, I'm going to tell you, we're very uh, grateful for all the work that you did. I, I want to know if the rotations and the clinicals that you did at FTC, do you think that helped you, <clears throat> helped you get a view of what you wanted to do? Or do you think the pandemic limited that experience? Um, because I see both sides. So the pandemic did, did limit some areas that we couldn't go to. I think um, for some, you couldn't go to the to surgery. I know yeah. or was a big one. And I know, uh, I think for a couple of semesters, no one was allowed in there. And in certain floors as well, I can't exactly remember. But um, the ones that we were allowed to go to, I know I helped out at the, in the hospital re rehabilitation center there. Right. Admission, admission regional. And um, I did help out in the med surge floor as well. But uh, it did help me kind of see like maybe I want to do med surge, which is the job I have now because right. in the med in the med surge floor, you learn a lot. Because so you're... tell us about what you're doing now. Tell us a little bit about your job. Sure. I can uh, let's we can, we can start at the beginning and I can work <laughs> where I'm at now. Good. So at Real Guy Regional Hospital. Uh, the way it works is that you're under a preceptorship where you work with uh, an experienced nurse yes. for about nine weeks and you're training under them to, you know, to learn the ropes, the hospital policies and everything like that and how to document. Documentation is something that, um, that I hate doing, but at least I know how to do it now because this is such a, it's such a lengthy thing, right? but I know how to do it now. So I'm able to get through it. Um, if, if the patient's stable, it doesn't take me that long, but okay. that's, it's some, that's something else. But I was learning under um, under my preceptor, different preceptors, and I'm really thankful for them because the support system there is amazing at that's the great. at Rio Grande Regional Hospital. So I was able to learn a lot. And uh, I remember uh, I remember my first day by myself. I had a rapid response at 7.30 in the morning. Oh my goodness. Yeah, it was my first day by myself, and I had a rapid response. So I was... That was crazy. Uh, the what happened to the patient without going to too much detail, obviously, because right. of the hip. Um, she uh, she was bradycardic, which means her heart rate was really slow. It was in mm -hmm. the 30s, if I recall correctly, and it was just it was just dropping and dropping. So I I called the charge nurse. So we called the rapid response, and I can't exactly remember what happened. I know it's a blur, but I know that it, it worked out well. She was transferred mm -hmm. to another floor for closer monitoring, and she was okay. Oh, good. good. Yeah. And then uh, after that, the day was a blur because uh, because due to the rapid response, uh, sometimes you're going to be behind on a lot of things. Right. And documentation and uh, assessing the patients. 
So um, what my job entails now is, of course, you know, uh, assessing the patient, see if they're okay. Um, you know, scheduling, if the doctor schedules a procedure, you know, to help out with that, explain to the patient what exactly yeah. is going to happen. And if there's any questions that they want to talk to the doctor, you can contact them. Mm-hmm. And of course, it involves different things too, like a wound care for patients, mm-hmm. uh, contacting doctors for uh, consults for if the, if the main doctor wants to consult another doctor for something like maybe a respiratory disease or, or for surgery or other things, you know, you talk to the doctors and then you're basically the main line of communication between doctors sometimes, because this doctor says, okay, tell doctor so-and-so that this is going to happen. And I, these, I'm going to put these orders in and you need to make sure they're followed, they're followed through. Right. So one thing I highly recommend is write everything down because you are going to forget with the craziness of the day. You are. Write, write everything down that's uh, the doctor says so you know what to do. And um, also uh, what can what happens is uh, sometimes uh, you will face challenges with the patients themselves. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've had some patients yell at me. I've had patients' family yell at me. I've had a couple of doctors yell at me too. <laughs> so um, you, it's a little difficult. Yes. Um, but you know, um, you know, thanks to the support system that you have there at home and at work, you know, and thank, I thank God that I was able to, you know, I'm here where I'm at now. Yes. And there has been, uh, plenty of other challenges, you know, sometimes, uh, you, you have a heavy load mm-hmm. of patient care. Sometimes it's a lot mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, uh, you just gotta, you gotta do your best. That's all you can. do. That's all you can do. That's correct. So tell us about your future. What what plans do you have as you're going on through this? I mean, you've only been on the job seven months and that's not very long, but I'm sure you have ideas of things you want to do because, you know, as all adults do, we want to grow and improve ourselves and improve our our professional standing. So what are what are some of your plans for the future? So I actually applied to go back to school for the, the LVN to ADN track program they have there at SDC. Yes. And so I'm waiting to see if I'm going to get in. So okay. it's kind of there. Now I'm waiting. And uh, right now I'm just focusing on my growth as a nurse there. I've learned a lot and I'm able to do a lot of things, things I never thought I could do now. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, I'm just focusing on trying to grow as a nurse. You know, sometimes you're going to encounter situations that you don't know how to handle. I know uh, actually recently uh, in my shift on Wednesday, they had a mandatory meeting for uh, to ha- how to handle stroke patients and, and uh, chest pain patients if they're coming mm-hmm. in or you have them and it, all of a sudden they have it. Yes. And it was um it was after a long shift and I was thinking, man, I don't want to go. <laughs> it, was eight, it was scheduled for 830 at night and I had finished working on documentation and everything at 730. I was thinking, do I really want to wait an hour? <laughs> and I decided, you know what? I don't want to go on my day off, so I'm going to go. Yeah. And I, I went, It was. I'm actually really thankful because these mandatory meetings, they're actually really helpful. Yes. Um, of course, you don't want to go sometimes after a long shift, but it was really helpful. I learned, um, I learned a lot from that uh, mandatory meeting. It kind of helped me to see how to assess the patient if they're having chest pain or having a stroke mm-hmm. and what exactly what what procedure to follow to do so. Yes. And uh, I was really thankful for that. So I'm just focusing on growing as a nurse as well, because there's a lot of challenges you're going to face there on the, on the floor. Right. And where you don't know how to handle it. So you need to use uh, your, excuse me, your critical thinking, your nursing judgment on how to do it. And uh, I can, if I, if I may, can I bring up one of them that actually I'm kind of a little proud of that actually happened recently? Yes. So uh, for this was actually in the same day as the mandatory boot camp meeting. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of the patients I had, he had a uh, superputed catheter. Basically, it was a catheter that goes into the bladder rather than through the urethra. Right. And the difficulty was was that uh, it had came, it had come off earlier, so that's why he was at the hospital. So the doctor, the urologist, uh, he was having a little trouble with it. For some reason, it would not drain through the catheter. Mm-hmm. So uh, the doctor decided to uh, wait a day to see what else he can do. So uh, in the meantime, there was a uh, urostomy bag, basically uh, where the stoma or the or where the hole was for the superfluid catheter, the urine would come out there and it would collect in this bag. Right. 
the greatest challenge was that um, it wouldn't the urostomy bag would not stick because of the urine that was coming off. No matter how much you cleaned up and how fast you could do it, right? Um, it would leak, and eventually the urostomy bag would start leaking, and the patient, of course, would get dirty. And even the patient himself was getting a little frustrated. You know, he right. was saying, "I'm sorry. It's just I wish that we could figure something out." So I had him for two days. So the second day I had him, which was the mandatory boot camp meeting, uh, the night nurse would, gave me some ideas of what she did that kind of worked, but it was still leaking. So I figured something out. So I thought, okay, let me try this. Mm-hmm. So I basically, you know, uh, with the with the urostomy pulled out, the urostomy, the stoma that was there, I had uh, had used some, I got some gauze and covered it while I was cleaning the area. And basically I used um, some supplies that I had on hand, like a uh, something that's called a, a a film no no irritation skin film barrier which is basically right. so protect the skin and make it a little sticky so that way the adhesive can help on the urostomy bag and then on the urostomy bag itself i applied a uh, ostomy paste basically kind of like a, a glue that's safe for the skin right so i can stick there so uh i took off the gauze real quick and i i, I put it on there as fast as i could right and uh I was, I told the patient, okay, let's see how it does. I know that it was been leaking, but hopefully it doesn't leak. Right. And actually it never leaked. After <gasps> That's that. awesome. I was, so, I was so happy about that. And the patient was too. And I remember the wound care nurse who was actually called in for, a uh, for one, for another reason for the patient, but she saw it uh, too, because she was going to help out that, that too. And she's like, you did a good job on this. It's actually working really well. I'm really proud. I'm like, oh, thank God. <laughs> so that was that was a that was a good shift. I actually felt really proud. I'm really glad to hear that. And I'm glad that you have those moments because I think in every profession you want to have those moments where you're proud of what you're doing, you take pride in your work, and you know that what you're doing is helping someone else. So yeah. I think that's awesome. I'm going to tell you as an intern, that's what makes me happy is that I know some of the things that I did helped you guys. And um to, to know that you're carrying on that. Um, I, I'm not your mother of no re, but I'm very proud of the work that you do. So that's very Thank exciting. You. Thank you. Um, I, I, I want to end with a couple questions. So first of all, um, what did you learn through all of this? Is, is I mean, I know that the, I don't know if there's some big takeaway, but is there something you can tell me? Because, you know, we've been together over three years now. So what did you learn through this process about, I don't know, you tell me. Uh, well, what I learned is that, um, you know, it's okay to fail sometimes. Okay, good. You know, you're you're going to fail sometimes. Like I mentioned, I failed, a, I failed a class at repeat the semester. That was very discouraging. And there's, there's actually times at the hospital where I felt like a failure because, you know, I was able to do something. Uh, I wasn't able to complete all all the things in my shift, and I had so much trouble with the patient or the family. And you know, it was very difficult. You know, I had I had come home from shifts sometimes wondering, do I want to be a nurse still? Because it was it was very difficult. Mm-hmm. But you know, failure is not the end. You know, you're gonna have moments where you think like, uh, you you don't feel good enough for for the job. Yes. To be a nurse or to or to or or whatever you do, you feel like you're not good enough. But it's um you. Use use those moments to remember that you know you worked hard for mm-hmm. where, where you're at. Yes, and you, you had a lot of people supporting you and encouraging you, so you don't you want to do your best. Yes, and uh, you'll definitely grow. It'll, it'll it'll take time. Yes, it uh, nothing nothing worth it ever comes easy, so no. it definitely takes time. I I'll tell you, my mother says it all the time. If it was easy, everyone would be doing it. Exactly. So I, I'm glad to hear you say that because, you know, no one has a perfect life. Everyone faces challenges. Even someone from the outside may seem like, you know, boy, they've got it made. Everyone faces challenges. There's ups, there's downs. And a real uh, hallmark of character is how you how you handle those. Because I yes. know my son went through the same thing you went through, uh, failing a class, which is, it's a big deal. There's no getting around that. It is a big deal and you have to repeat the semester and it makes it very difficult. Um, but when you come out the other side, as you did, um, you see that. Um, and I think my my last thing was, what was the best part about this whole 
uh, journey um, from, you know, your 18 through STC through having your job? Can you, can you give us a highlight of all of this? Um, I guess the highlight would be the journey itself, actually. Mm -hmm. because, um, you see where you came from and now where you are, and you know, you definitely did it alone. You know, I, I thank God that I was able to get to where I'm at now. And, you know, with everyone else who supported me along the way, you know, my, my family, my, my classmates yes, uh, who are nurses now as well. I've, I've been in contact with some of them. I know one of them's actually working in the ER as a nurse right now. Right. And, um, and you know, having the support system that's there from, you know, from your friends, family, uh, and, you know, it was really helpful and the journey was rewarding. You know, you have your ups, you have your, your you definitely have your downs. Yes but it helps you see how much you've grown from the beginning and uh, how much you, how much potential you have left still to, you know, continue to grow. Mm -hmm. Well, Andres, I want to thank you for joining us today. It's been a pleasure uh, getting to see you, even if it's just virtually, but it's a pleasure to see you and talk to you and for us to be able to record your journey, because um, as I told you at the very beginning, there are lots of opportunities in the valley, if you want to go into healthcare, it's just a matter of seeking them out. So I want to thank you. Um, thank you for everyone who has joined us um, and have yourself a great day.